Good morning. Glad that you're joining me for Sunday School this morning. And we finished our study last week on Speak Life. Today we're just going to do a one-part study out of 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4 has really been encouraging me over the last couple of weeks. And so I thought before we jump into a new series, I wanted to go over 2 Corinthians 4 with you and hopefully it will encourage you. In the middle of all of the mess that 2020 has been, God, God is at work. He has a heart for the lost ones around us. And um, when we read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, twice Paul says to the Corinthians, we do not lose heart. We do not lose hope. So I wanted you um, to just join me this morning as we go through 2 Corinthians 4 and talk about why we have hope, why we don't lose heart. Um, when we think about Corinth, that city was right in the middle of some very important trade routes. And it was well known for kind of its wildness. It, it might have been called the Las Vegas of its day. Paul went there on a missions trip he preached the good news about Jesus, that salvation is a free gift offered through Jesus. And he lived with this, this church family in Corinth for 18 months, a year and a half of his life pouring into this church. And he writes them several letters, four we believe, two that had gotten lost and two that are here in the Bible. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he is talking to believers there that have gotten very discouraged. There was persecution. There were stressors. There were hardships that they were dealing with. But Paul is about to encourage them to renew their hope. And I'd like to read for you one more time, starting at 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, and we're going to read through verse 6. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose hope. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth truth plainly, we recommend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel and the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as his servants and your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let sh light shine out of darkness, made his light to shine in our hearts and gave us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. We do not lose heart because we have seen and we understand that Jesus has come for us. He's revealed the glory of God and his love for us in dying for us. I want us to look very carefully at verses 7. Um, it says, We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the all-surpassing power 
is from God and not us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus Christ so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Verse 7 again says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the all-surpassing power is from God and not us. We are those jars of clay. Fragile, breakable, imperfect, and um, very fragile, common, but empty inside. However, Paul says, we have this treasure in jars of clay. Jesus, the knowledge of him, fills that jar of clay. When you think about the clay pots, they were the most common, the lowest stand, um, value by the standards of the world. But Paul purposely uses that picture for us that even though we have weakness, we're sub subject to breaking, to leaking, <laughs> we are filled with something so valuable and true. What is that? What is that treasure within? If we go back to verse 6, it reminds us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The treasure inside these jars of clay is the good news of salvation and grace and also the Holy Spirit that indwells those who say, yes, I want to receive you, Jesus. I want forgiveness. I want my life to be in you. Common clay pots, but shown that they're of value to God and housing the presence of our God. It's incredible we are able to contain a treasure and no matter what we are facing this isn't a treasure that's a physical thing it's a treasure that transforms us and empowers us to serve um, the treasure in jars of clay the treasure is not crushed <laughs> maybe it's hard pressed on every side, this jar of, of clay, but the treasure is not crushed. We may be perplexed, but the treasure is not, fills us with joy. We are not in despair. I was so thankful for the message that Pastor Caleb gave this last Sunday. He reminded us of thankfulness that how important it is to live our lives in thankfulness even in the difficulties that we face from day to day even in the times when we are pressed when we are perplexed struck down paul says we carry in our our spirit man the life of jesus that treasure, the Holy Spirit residing in us. It's an incredible gift. There are three verbs um, that Paul uses, afflicted, persecuted, struck down, but none of these things defeated him because of Christ. And you may be persecuted, perplexed, struck down, but you are not defeated because of the very life 
of God that dwells in you. Who, my friends, we are a bunch of very ordinary clay pots that hold a treasure that will meet the challenges of our day. Whatever your challenge is, whatever my challenge is, it's not too big for God. And so Paul talks a little bit about the challenges that he has faced. Um, he says in verse 11, for we are alive, who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. Wow. When you offer that jar of clay to Jesus, he so willingly fills us. And the treasure of the Holy Spirit in you and in me can have an eternal impact on our world around us. That is the incredible gift. That's why Paul could say, we do not lose heart. In fact, in verse 16, he says again, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving in us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Where will you fix your eyes? Will you fix your eyes on Jesus? Will you fix your eyes on him who gives you life <laughs> and let him renew that life in you day by day so that the outside stressors, which Paul knew a lot about, beaten, shipwrecked, put in prison, he knew what he was talking about, but we do not lose heart. He says it twice in this chapter. Because we are filled with the Spirit of God and renewed day by day. You and I get to join the Lord in things that are eternal. The people that your life touches need to see in your pot of clay something that's more than just what you can do, your abilities, your gifts. Thank God for them, but they are not enough once the Spirit of God resides in us, once we start to reflect the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. That's where the changes come. I'm thankful that God lets us join him in things that are eternal, that he would take these very common and ordinary jars of clay and pour his presence into us. We will not lose hope. We will say to him, here am I, <laughs> send me. Use me, Lord, for your kingdom. I just want to encourage you today that you're not living this life for Christ out of your resources. You can receive resources from him. Let's live with full jars of clay, full of the Holy Spirit, full of a, a knowledge and understanding of who Jesus is, who he says we are in his word. And because we live in that strength of his word, his presence, people around us can be touched for eternity by the hope that there is in Jesus Christ. I hope that you have a marvelous week coming up. 
not because your outside circumstances are so great, but because you're letting that treasure fill you and renew your hope day by day. Thank you so much. Thank you.